Hi there everyone, it's Isaac Newton time and I mean that quite literally because we have two items to do with Isaac Newton and time. And as always, Keith, we've also got boxes because we love opening boxes here on Objectivity. It's good, yes. All right, I'm going to remove the lid and we're going to take out this item here. Very beautiful. Obviously, we have a watch. This is an early 18th century watch and it's always been associated with Sir Isaac Newton. It was donated to the Royal Society in the belief that this was Newton's watch. Whenever you say associated with, that's always a bit of a giveaway that you have some doubts rather than saying this belonged to him. Yeah. Let's open this up and the watch itself, if I very carefully take this out, has an engraving on the back. Mrs. Kath Conduit to Sir Isaac Newton, January 4th, 1708. Catherine Conduit was Newton's niece. She married John Conduit, who was Newton's successor at the Royal Mint. The only trouble with it is the dating. The watch was made after that. Therefore, we think that it's, it's not quite right. So when you look at when this watch was actually made, it turns out that it's impossible that this belonged to Sir Isaac Newton. Is this something that historians and librarians, people like you, are constantly up against? That naughty element of people who are trying to increase the value of items? That, that's right. And, and the, the most important thing in any museum object is its provenance. Where did it come from? Can we document its, its existence right from its very creation? OK. Fake Isaac Newton watch, maybe, probably. Let's look at a genuine one. All right. This, not, is, this is not a watch. Uh, it's a timekeeper, just not quite as, as fancy and, and gold as that one. The enclosed solar dial, cut in stone, made by the hand of Sir Isaac Newton when a boy, 1844, taken out of the wall of the manor house at Woolsthorpe, County Lincoln, in which he was born and presented the same year to the Royal Society by the Reverend Charles Turner, FRS to whose family the house belongs. So Woolsthorpe Manor is this quite cute little house in Lincolnshire, as it's called now, the ancestral home of Sir Isaac Newton. Yep. So we've got a sundial that he carved into the wall. So this is not just a timepiece owned by Isaac Newton, it's a timepiece made by Isaac Newton. Are you ready, everyone? This is what we're waiting for. Let's slowly open her up. There it is. It's quite faint to see the sort of the, the lines and the numbers that have been carved into the stone, but they're all there. We know from accounts of Newton's childhood, and, and William Stukeley's manuscript is, is a good source for this, that Newton made lots of objects uh, during his childhood. So he made solar dials like this one, he made water clocks, he made models. And this stone would have been in the wall at Walsall Manor when Charles Turner owned the place and uh, removed uh, in, a, in a, an act of 19th century vandalism and uh, sent to the Royal Society as a, as a memento of Isaac Newton. So Keith, presumably this would have had a pointer or a marker for the shadow to be cast onto the numbers. What's, what's happened to the marker? That's right. Well, presumably that was something temporary, maybe an iron spike or something like that, possibly a triangle. Uh, and of course it would cast a shadow at the appropriate time of day. How do we know Isaac Newton carved it? You talk about provenance and wanting yeah. to be sure about things. Is there any way to know that or is it just... Would it have been a story handed down over the years at that time? It or? would have been a story handed down, but the, the house had belonged to the family for a good long time, and that, that's a good sign. The stone isn't something you can just pop into a wall as evidence of Newton's life. It had to be there in the first place. One could argue that somebody else might have carved it, but, but who would? really. I mean, Newton's the one who's interested in science in that rural area. We have drawings of the sundial in situ in the wall of, of Walsalt Manor. So provenance wise, that's pretty good. It started its life in Lincolnshire. Mm -hmm. It now lives here at the Royal Society in London. But this has travelled around a bit, this sundial, over the years? or It has, and it's, it's lately come back from the National Science Museum in Korea, where we've had it on exhibition for a short time. So this and some other Newton artefacts were crated up, sent over there in a plane on exhibition for two or three months, and uh, I had to go and retrieve them and bring them back again in one piece. Were they really excited over in Korea when this arrived and having it there? Yep, they were hugely excited. The exhibition did very well, and we hope it's the first in a longer relationship. Is there anything else we should be looking at? Well, this is quite interesting. Can you see just at the bottom corner of the stone, there's still a bit of lichen clinging to it. Now, this object is very often displayed with the case down, so it's, it's completely dark, but there seems to be a little bit of possibly Lincolnshire life clinging to the stone. So Isaac Newton's sundial, 
along with Sir Isaac Newton's fake watch. Yeah. <laughs> this book is dedicated to Sir Isaac Newton. It is, and it's one of six identical volumes. This tells us that this is a collection of, of Newtoniana, engraved portraits of Isaac Newton and many other things besides, arranged and compiled by Charles Turner.